I don't know. Is there anything wrong with Arsenal? I'm just asking. You know. But why does why, why does your tonality have that undercurrent I mean, of? It's not meant to. It's because I'm a Leicester fan. It just came. <laughs> it came out naturally. I like Jamie Vardy. Yeah, I think he's good. having a party all the time. Yeah. <laughs> so Arsenal, because uh, my history with football it started in the early 90s. You know, we used to watch World Cup football. That was the kind of uh, football that we had access to watching. Yeah. So I started with uh, Roberto Baggio and the likes. Uh, you know, I was a huge fan of the Italy national squad. Brazil, yeah. of course, 96, 98, started growing up a little more, getting more and more into football. We started getting access to video games, you know, that kind of, uh, you know, you learn the names yeah. and then you see the same people. Yeah. Um, so it was with international football. And then league football started being telecast, you know. And once I started watching the Premier League, I was hooked, instantly hooked. And at the time just so happened yeah. that Arsenal was going through the purple patch, as they say. The Invincibles were playing at the time. Mm -hmm. Vieira, Lundberg, Perez, Thierry, the King, Henri. Adams, I mean, come on. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Uh, that squad playing the most three-dimensional, never-been-witnessed-before kind of football. I was like, look at this team. Look at how they play. They play the game in a principled way, the way football should be played playing it well, winning, and making it look damn good. That's why Arsenal. Okay, no. <laughs> so how <laughs> Listen, are you, you're telling me you are as big You tell me, have you seen a player as graceful on the ball as Henri? The man, he's like a gazelle. No, I haven't. I haven't. No. <laughs> it's true. See, there's no bigger Arsenal fan than you, right? I mean... No, listen, listen. Yes or no? There are bigger Arsenal fans. No, no, fans. but you're, you're, you're pretty big. I'm a right? pretty big right. Arsenal fan. I've got a killer question for you. Okay. No, you, don't do it. Don't do it, Manish. Don't do it. No, no, no. I Not ask, that one. I gotta ask Not you the hashtag. <laughs> no, please, no. 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 <laughs> Are you ready? Here we go. Um, if you had the choice, one choice, to choose between Arsenal winning the Premier League or India winning the World Cup. India winning the World Cup. Come on. I don't even have to think about that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I just, I just had to test you on that one. Just Come on. Sure. That's Thank a no-brainer. So when you met Patrick Vieira and the way your knees wobbled, as you've already just <laughs> mentioned, did you have an insight as to what it's like then to be a man fan, to be a fan of someone when you yourself have so many million fans? I had two incidents. The second, the latter one being with Patrick Vieira. Yeah. Um, but the first one was with Thierry Henry. You know, he happened to come to Mumbai some time ago. And um, I didn't know if I was going to be able to make it to meet him that night. Um, but uh, I hustled, you I gathered a bunch of friends and I made it. Mm. And you know, I, would, I was in this, my heart was beating fast and I was trying to get there. And I entered the room and I laid eyes on him. And suddenly all the emotions that I felt watching him play, they all started surging through me. And I was almost moved to tears just seeing this man in person. I have such great reverence. He's one of my favorite footballers of all time. Yeah. And the way he was with me, Manish, with such grace, mm. such a humble guy. He's a cool dude. Yeah. He's extremely, he's like a completely a gentleman and charismatic to another level. The amount of patience he showed uh, with not just me, with everybody who was excited to meet him. You know, it changed me forever. And this is very recently. Mm. I have so much more value and respect for the fan celebrity uh, engagement, you know, that I understand. I used, to, I used to wonder how is it that some people meet you and they're in tears. Yeah. You know, I used, to, I used to find, I had not experienced that myself, so I used to wonder about it. But having been through it, you know, this is the kind of inspiration your idol gives you. Yeah. You know, he, he, after my interaction with him, it's made me more kind, more, more humble, more generous. The way he treated people, I watch him, admire him, take inspiration from him, and I try and pay it forward because he inspires me. You try to, you try to pay that goodness forward. Yeah. One of the most memorable um, interactions of my life. Sorry, can I ask you to leave or go? Just back to the Um. <laughs> it's all happening. Yeah. Huh. He's just like... <laughs> 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 
right behind Manisha's head. It's, it's <laughs> I thought you were looking at me a bit funny, I'll be honest. <laughs> and then at the Emirates, Kate was there. Uh, and I was with my best friend who yeah. actually initiated me. He is a part, large part of the reason I became an Arsenal fan uh, is because I used to watch with him and he was already so passionate about the North London team. Yeah. Um, so we were pitch side. We finished all our responsibilities. It was wonderful to be pitch side at the Emirates. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous stadium. And uh, Sadio Mani came out to kind of get a feel of the atmosphere, just get a, you know, uh, feel it out. Yeah, yeah. Uh, shook hands with him. I was like, yes, Sadio Mane. Um, and then we were walking through the tunnel. We were done. We were walking through the tunnel. My friend Karan, he was walking ahead of me. And now I want you to imagine, I'm at the end of the tunnel and I'm walking through and I'm seeing Karan is walking in front of me and he makes the turn. And as soon as he makes the turn, he goes like, oh my God. So, <laughs> so I was like, what's going on yeah. here? What's going on? What's going on? And he couldn't, he was bumbling, so he couldn't, he couldn't indicate or communicate to me in that state uh, <laughs> what he was trying to say. So I was like, what is going on here? And I took the turn, I was like, oh my God. It was Patrick Vieira. He, you know, first, he's an imposing figure. Is, yeah. Somebody who I'd never in my wildest imagination think that I'd get to meet standing in front of me. It was... One hell of a moment. Yeah. Uh, one I'll never forget. I have a picture, you know. So I'm fanboying like crazy over the footballers that I meet. These are people you see on television, cheer for, that yeah. you have a sentiment, emotional connection, connection with yeah. because you feel for uh, your team, yeah. you know. You watch them week after week. Uh, so meeting these people, meeting Henri, meeting Perez, meeting Vieira, meeting Vidic, um, it's surreal. It's, it's surreal. Yeah. When you're shooting your films, do you get time to watch any of the games? Absolutely. How? Be I make the time. Are you in between shots? Because, because Listen, it's in between scenes, yeah. I can, I'm picturing you looking at your mobile. Yeah. No, is it really? Yeah, true? it's true. It's true. That's how you do it. Um, I don't know if I'm allowed to mention the app, but it's definitely on my phone. And it's my favorite app because it, it allows me to watch the yeah, live telecast of the matches. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, first of all, and my manager uh, can vouch for this, uh, every time we're scheduling, um, it's almost as if there is an understanding we're both conditioned to not keep anything on a Saturday evening or a Sunday evening. You know, those that time is a little bit precious. Unless, you're, unless you're in your hideaway where you get into, you're in some hideaways. Yeah, those, those, free those films, 20 days are, yeah. are de you know, you can't really focus on anything else. Uh, no friends, no family time, no nothing. That's yeah. the really sacred time in the characterization process. But, uh, but yeah, if I'm out about doing anything that I can't avoid, the yeah. scheduling clash, sometimes matches are at 5 p.m., sometimes 8 p.m., and yeah. you're still at work, yeah. um, then you'll see me with the mobile. Uh, they'll be like, sir, short ready. I was like, yeah, yeah, just, I'm just uh, touching my makeup up. Just be with you in a second. Uh, let's wait for the play to ball to go out of bounds. Okay, yeah, go give the, <laughs> give the shot, come back. The, you're watching, watching. You know, there's a very, um, there's a certain atmosphere on the set ah. and sometimes, uh, you know, something will happen. You and must then drive your director you'll crazy. You'll just react with expletives, unmentionables. You'll be like, sorry, it's yeah. nothing, it's nothing. <laughs> uh, so yeah, it is, I have to catch that little uh, um, window to kind of watch the matches. Mm. It's great that we have these apps, that way you don't miss out. Brilliant. Now look, um, last time I spoke to you, we were still waiting on the release yeah. um, of um, Padmavat. Yeah. I mean, like, blimey, talking, talk about a film that's obviously rocketed since its release back in December. Uh, did it happen in December? Uh, January. January. So, I mean, you were with us in December. We were waiting. So it's made you a very busy man since then. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's breaking it's records all over the place. Yeah. It's, it's doing something I had never imagined. It's uh, one of those um, rare films that sort of encompasses everything, the critical acclaim, the commercial success, the love of the audience. And it seems to me the way audiences have reacted to the film that it's one of those films 
for the ages, you know, it's one that will be remembered because those are the films you really want to be a part of. Yeah. You know, films come and films go, but the ones that really matter are the ones that are remembered after years. You know, you can watch it 10 years down the line, 15 mm. years down the line and still appreciate it with the films that have that timeless quality. You know, so those are the ones that you want most in your filmography. I'm very proud to say Padmanabh is, is seeming to me like it's going to be one of those. And many congratulations Thank to you, you on that. Um, but to tie the Bollywood thing in with the football, I mean, if you had to play any footballer in the world in a Bollywood movie, which one would it be? Um, I don't know. I'm a, I don't know. I don't know. Any suggestions? Anyone? Yeah? Who do you say? <laughs> Who do you say? Sunil Chetri, Robin Singh, I don't know. Uh, well, a Premier League, if there was a Premier League player that you could emulate. Uh, you mentioned Henri. Would you play, want to play Henri? I, I don't have the height to play Vieira. Um, I, I don't have the looks he's to play Lundberg. He's got the hair for Lundberg, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> the, the, en energy, the, yeah, the sure, energy he's sure. got, yeah. Uh, I, think, I think I pulled off Alauddin Khilji. So maybe I could be Vidic. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? Yeah, yeah. Huh? Yeah, that's good. Just a, just a badass. Just like, <laughs> come at me, bro. <laughs> come at me. <laughs> and if um, you talk about you being a big uh, Premier League fan, and I know this time last year during the movement conference we had Abhishek come in, and obviously he's a big fan of the Premier League. Do you, I mean, any, do you ever watch games with other members of the Bollywood fraternity? Um, is there a bit of banter between you guys or not? There is banter, yes, there is banter for sure. This is banter, this banter is my favorite, one of my favorite things. I'm a big <laughs> trash talker, <laughs> and sometimes even in a formal sort of engagement, now and then, I'm not able to control my verbal diarrhea, so. <laughs> So yeah, I'm a big trash talker, but uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, Abhishek's a uh, big Chelsea fan. Yeah. Arjun Kapoor is a big Chelsea fan, um, and we go back and forth, so what's bantering gonna, with each other. So a what's going to happen on Sunday? Uh, with the League Cup final. I'm biting my nails. You know, honestly, sometimes I feel like I can't even watch. You know, and I keep telling myself till the last minute, I can't watch. I can't watch. I'm not going to watch. I'm not going to watch. And I'm watching. And I'm heartbroken. And like you said, I usually like to watch alone mm. unless I'm assured that the people that I'm watching with are the people I want to watch with and not a single extra person. Yeah. Otherwise, that viewing thing is very an immersive engagement for me. So I prefer to watch alone unless it's the three or four people who I know mm. are on the same page. Yeah. Because when people, I can't go to bars and pubs personally because when people jabber, jabber, jabber stuff, like I just, I want to get into a fight. So I'm <laughs> I'd rather, you know, so I just rather watch Shanti say alone and implode rather than explode. Yeah. Which I think again is going to happen on Sunday. Actually, yeah. uh, I've seen, uh, there's been a story about Rio Ferdinand getting into a hoodie to stand in the away end at a game to watch Manchester United play and not to get grief from all the other supporters around him. Would you ever do something like that? I mean, Rio's proper thug life, you know? So <laughs> I maybe, I don't know. It's a bit scary. Yeah. <laughs> it's a bit scary. Yeah. Uh, it's a bit more comfortable. If you're Rio it. Ferdinand, you, can, you have the confidence to do it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, he played along with Vidic, to be honest. So <laughs> yeah. he has no, he has no, he's no shy at all. Um, listen, stay on here because you're going to be part of our next panel discussion. All right. But that's a great way to warm us up for the panel discussion because it's all about fan engagement. Super. And you've spoken about fans and you've been on the receiving end and now how the tide has turned for you with the Patrick Vieira incident. Um, put your hands together, please, for Ranveer Singh. Thank you, guys. Thank you. So as part of this panel discussion, uh, as I'd said, it's entitled Fan Engagement. Now, it's our final discussion um, of the entire conference after two days. It focuses on the on-ground realities then of fan engagement and in the involvement in a unique market like India. So how to build and grow a loyal fan base and subsequently convert the fans into a sustainable revenue stream. So joining Ranveer on set today, please put your hands together for Gaurav Modwell, president of FC Pune City. Arvind Einagar, uh, CEO, Sports Interactive. <laughs> Tim Vine, Director of International and Public Affairs at the Premier League. And Akshay Tandon, 
co-owner and club president of FC Goa. Hello, my friend. Good to see you. All good? Of Akshay, I mean, to you both, obviously, you've got franchises in the ISL. What are the key factors involved? Tell me about in terms of building, growing a loyal fan base for football stakeholders in India. Uh, you've both got mic. Have you got microphones yeah, on, haven't you? Microphone. Okay, Gaurav, we'll, we'll start with you. Yeah, so um, if you look at fan bases in India, you can see there are two different countries. One where he comes from, which is Goa, Bengal, Northeast, Kerala. Yeah. And then there's the rest of India. The part that I come from, and, and you will understand uh, where the fan engagement process starts for us, mm. is at the end of the first year of ISL, once uh, the season was over, first year was very hurried, we never got time to engage with fans. At, at the end of the first year, we uh, got onto social media, we saw who are the fans who are writing to us, and we, we had a call out for all the fans to come, and we did a fan meet, bringing all our key players for the fan meet. We were expecting a few thousand to come. Right. There were 21 people who walked in. 21? 21. And that's where we sat. We said, what's the next step? Where do we go from here? And we started a slogan, which is everyone 21. We said, each one of us, let's try to get 21 more guys to come. And that's where the Orange Army, which is now yeah. the it's militant the fan group, official fan group, which is there, and now we have a few thousand. We fill up the stadiums with eight, 10,000. But it's been a journey which started from there, very unlike Akshay. So I'll leave it to him to explain how it's been in Goa. But for us, it's a very challenging journey yeah. uh, from there. But I'm very happy in two and a half years. We have created a very, very loyal fan base. We travel to various places. There's away travels. And uh, things are improving from there. So may I? Hello. <laughs> you're, you're, you're a moderator. How is Arjun Kapoor working out? Arjun is doing pretty well. So he's... I think he's, he's doing being, very well. He, I've seen all his expressions in his social media posts. Yeah, just yes. like that. Yes. Just like that. Isn't, ah. that too, isn't that too good? I love it. Thankfully, he brings a great energy. we are giving him an opportunity to do it because he's, we're winning some games. Yeah, he's, uh, he's bringing good energy. Huh? I mean, yeah. honestly, um, if I may say so from my point of view, ever since he's associated, you know, Things are, there's a great energy around uh, Pune. Yes. yes, and it helps because he's himself a, you know, football fan like you. So it, it helps mm. in terms of engaging with the fans. So yeah, mm. it's working out well. Akshay? Um, like, so we bought in uh, to FC Goa about a year and a half ago at a time when FC Goa was going through uh, quite a tumultuous stage. They weren't sure about uh, like whether they were going to continue, there was question about their ownership, and that's what we sort of came into. And I think that's where I learned um, sort of my first lesson about fan engagement. Uh, like I come from a marketing background, so I thought fan engagement was, you know, your traditional engagement, and like we measure engagement. But I think my first lesson was that engagement is emotional, um, and purely emotional, because when we came in, it, like initially we were resented, you know, we weren't from there. Um, we, we came into something. And we had to learn to kind of channel that resentment because we had to take ownership and realize, look, this is their passion. This is their engagement. Even though they aren't happy about this change and us coming on board, we have to take this and realize that, that, that you know, like, like we have to be grateful for the fact that they care enough to not like us mm. um, and sort of work from there. And, I mean... Having a marketing background, um, our social media engagement numbers were through the roof. Uh, but true engagement really comes in, like we saw that beginning of this year, when the product is good, which is like the team is playing well. Uh, they appreciate what's happening on the pitch. And uh, like you're doing something for the youth of Goa and the grassroots and stuff. And that's what really sort of turned it around for us, I think. But wouldn't the bottom line just be success on the pitch? means a, a bigger fan base or is it is that far too simple so uh, i spend a lot of time in understanding a fi fan and his psychology because we had to do it we had to build it from scratch uh, 
there was uh, one of the trips when I went to uh, Premier League and uh, we were meeting a lot of clubs and we asked them, how do you define a plan? Where does the process start? And uh, a number of times it was when he comes for the first time to the stadium, or buys the first season ticket, a lot of times those answers came and I was left wondering that we will have to think about our own formula, our own framework to mm -hmm. look at it because even the Man United fans or Arsenal fans in India don't fall under the fan definition mm. there because they would never be going there. So we start, I, I started personally doing a lot of research work on forming our own model, our own framework. And um, if I take a couple of minutes to tell you where it comes from. Yeah, by all means. Um, so there's an organization behaviorist called David McLeland who talks about the need of a human being. In, uh, this was, he did his work about 20 years after the Maslow. And he came out with the three important needs that a person has, the need for power, the need for affiliation, and the need for achievement, the NAC, the N affiliation, and N power. And we figured out that fans actually need this, and we started creating a framework in Pune City, which, which is to create a platform which they engage, so affiliation, they all come together, they go for wave matches, they experience mm. things together, they chant together. The second one was, for the need for power. So it's a proximity to power. We laid down an access to them to approach us in the club. For that matter, I, every week, I talk to the fans at least three to four times through social media. And this is for two and a half years now. So we have been doing it on a weekly basis with them. A proximity to us, and most important is what you asked about winning, which yeah. is a sense of achievement, a need for achievement. And that comes from winning. And we laid down our youth teams, we started participating, we lifted the IFA shield, um, uh, which is Joy was talking about, the one which in 1911, Mohan Bagan beat, it's the same shield, our youth teams went and won that. We're doing much better now, and obviously mm. it helps to win, but there's much more emotional connect. Tim, in England, engaging the fans is solely down to the clubs, isn't it? So what is the Premier League's perspective on this? Yeah, I like that. Akshay, if you, if you, if you could have this guy as a brand ambassador. Is it Varun or is it both? Like, I don't know, you're confusing the hell out of it's us. It's Virat, it's Virat. Okay, okay, it's Virat, it's uh, Virat. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I think uh, with ambassadors and with sponsors, um, we have to look at more than one season and more than one campaign. Um, and I think we have to find a way to like tell good stories, uh, which can kind of, I mean, like in a story which has a five year or a 10 year kind of gestation period. So if, if these are ambassadors that are going to be here for not just like, you know, one year, it's like it's not a one-term deal. Like, can we come up with a story of how through the grassroots, uh, where we bring a sponsor on board, the ambassador is representing th the entire sort of story and not just a particular marketing campaign, mm -hmm. is how we go about sort of engaging with, uh, I mean, that's what we're trying to do with Virat. In fact, next week, he's launching our foundation for us. Uh, so, uh, I mean, like the idea is to kind of engage them in initiatives that are going to be there for 10 years as opposed to, you know. I mean, like we know Virat can't attend matches very often, like he's yeah. the busiest man in the country, you know, so. Yeah. Um, just with you, Rumvir, I mean, you know, talking about brand ambassadors, you, uh, you often sometimes see celebrities, singers being associated with brands they have no connection with. But then there's you and the Premier League just looks like a natural fit. And some people might be skepticism, but you bring genuine enthusiasm when it sits in your lap and there is that natural link between you and that, and that other brand. Um, that is <coughs> of utmost importance to me that uh, any, any, any entity that I associate, anything that I associate with has to be genuine. Yeah. It has to be bona fide. If it's not the Premier League, let me say it's another thing. I am uh, selling a toothpaste. I ought to be using that toothpaste and I ought to be experiencing everything that product promises to me. So I genuinely believe that from the heart. I'm convinced of it. And so I can sell it, mm. um, endorse it. And only if it's organic, if that association, will it bear fruit, according to me. Yeah. This is in my experience. So Because you can't fake that enthusiasm. True. Um, which is why... For a large number of years, there were there were a lot of um, uh, sports entities wanting to associate, yeah. you know. But my only thing to them would be, I can't fake it. 
I it will show it it will show the seams will show at some point. You know, it will it will show that it's not really heartfelt. Yeah. So when the Premier League came along, <laughs> then I absolutely jumped at it because you there's genuinely uh, a connection an, an there. There's there. feeling there. Yeah. So so even if um, and I love doing this. I'm always <laughs> on Twitter with you watching yeah. the matches, tweeting. It is it 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 really that energy is is real. It's organic and yeah. so it spreads. Yeah. You know. So it's it's got to be it's got to be legit. Let's put it that way. Okay. I'd say from from our perspective, I was I was lucky enough to meet Ranveer back in October when we first had this discussion, and I, the, uh, the overriding emotion was definitely genuine enthusiasm <laughs> when I left that meeting, uh, just bowled over by it. I think now we need to work out how we clone him and roll <laughs> him out in other markets. <laughs> That's yeah. going to be the big challenge. Mind so you any, any scientists out there, we'll have a word later. Yeah. Well, I don't think Vidic did his, his claims much harm. He's, he's been fantastic. Absolutely. You wanted to say something? Um, no, I was just going to say that really explains your uh, association with Durex as well. <laughs> very true, sir. <laughs> See, but that doesn't bear sir, fruit. Sir, that was my very <laughs> first endorsement in my whole life. What does that tell you? <laughs> that, is the, that is the beauty about sport, right? Because at the end of the day, there are certain things you can get excited about. Yeah. But it's really hard to say, man, I love this engine oil, right? Like yeah. No one actually goes thinking about that. Right? But you yeah. get a brand ambassador about, you know, Sport, Premier League, things just coming through, right? I think yeah. it comes back to that fandom, and most brand ambassadors, if they are genuine fans, yeah. it's easier to find in sport that just is the perfect yeah. fit. And that's perfect, but then you have challenging aspects, i.e. the off-season. I mean, how do you get, what activities do you have to keep the fans engaged during the off-season, for example? Yeah, you know, that's a great question, and it's particularly true in India where, you know, unlike the rest of the world where you have leagues that run for six, nine months, I mean, till this before this year, it was yeah. like a three-month season, right? With the ISL, we had a six-week Kabaddi league. And so there, I think it's important to do three things, right? One is bank as much relevant content as you can yeah. during the regular season. So you won't have access to the players. How do you still get things going out uh, as often as you can? Two is to try and stay relevant, right? So how do you pick up a trend that's coming up and still talk about it? So there isn't, you know, once the ISL season is over, can you still talk about India football as a whole? Can you talk about an association with a Premier League club that you're tied into. Yeah. Um, and the third is then how do you create offline opportunities to build that fandom, right? And it's, we've made it hard for ourselves because the cricket started the template in India with a Premier League kind of, uh, you know, the IPL window, which was six weeks. Yeah. That's really not the model that's worked anywhere else in the world. And I think we're seeing longer seasons for these other leagues. Um, and it's therefore then just creating a longer mm. in-season, which then can build momentum to the off-season. And what are the unique challenges that are posed by the Indian supporters to the stakeholders as opposed to supporters from other parts of the world? So that, again, um, will depend on the sport, right? And right. I think that's one of the things which, you, know, you take a sport like Kabaddi, which has done phenomenally well, right? Yeah. Um, what, what's really helped is it's been packaged brilliantly by, by, you know, by the league, but it's also, you know, you know, you have the best in the world playing there. When you take the Indian Super League, that's always going to be a challenge for the diehard football mm. fan to say, hey, this is not vintage, right? Um, so how do you just, is it the best quality football? But the league has done a phenomenal job of getting folks who would, wouldn't even watch the Premier League, right? Getting the flirts and converting them to fans. Mm. And so that's where I think you need to figure out what's unique about the Indian market and then what do you need to do as a challenge to say, even if I don't have best quality of play, how do I bring in the entertainment factor? How do I bring in then over time the quality of play? So get people in and convert non-followers into flirts, flirts to fans, and then fans to fanatics. Right? Yeah, because you, you, like you said, Gaurav, earlier, you have to almost measure, you know, not how you do it, as to how you quantify what is a fan. You said, you said so that earlier. So the way I define a fan now is not quantifying, but how I define a fan now is when he gets the bragging rights, when you have provided him the bragging rights, where he takes a position with his peer set in terms of saying, this is my team, this is the person I support, this is the Bollywood star I support, and you take a position. Yep. The day you take a position, then you keep rationalizing and you're becoming bigger and bigger fan of. So that is the point when I call a fan, when, when he has taken a position with his peer set. Yeah. But one of the things that I wanted to add to off-season activities, and this was one of the experiences, uh, I was talking to a lot of people in Pune after the first season again, and 
and they told me that, you know what these leagues are, what these franchises are, they are circuses. They come to our city, show the circus for 40 days, 50 days, and they go away. These are not clubs. And that stayed with, with us for a very long time. So we started building our own training facility, we started our academy, we started a women's team, we started an under 13, under 15, under 18 team. So for us, the season starts with the preseason in August, goes on till May, we are playing throughout, wow. we are conducting tournaments with corporates, so we have a corporate super cup, which happens every year now, where corporates are participating, who are based in Pune. We are doing, um, looking at massive following for uh, the European clubs, we have started uh, a tournament between the supporters club, so a Bayern Munich supporters club versus an Arsenal supporters club, we do a tournament, so all, even when there are two months, when there's uh, no activity, we actually con continue uh, to engage with them and conduct yeah. a lot of footballing activity. Sorry, I'm glad. You know, you just Continuing <laughs> activity. Yeah. Fans engaged or not? <laughs> well, I think um, today was a wonderful experience. We uh, engaged with children, uh, myself and Nemanja Vidic at uh, Andrew's ground. Mm -hmm. And there you sort of saw the vision actually transpiring, right? Um, at, at its very core, you want to get young people engaging with football mm. across the world. Um, and football being the beautiful sport, the one that binds the whole world together, transcends boundaries, transcends mm. cultures. It's a language people speak across the world. It's almost, I don't even know what to call it. Is it a language? It's, is it a religion? Is it an emotion? Um, football is this amazing thing, you know? And uh, to encourage, young people will, you know, that sustainability factor will will be, I don't in on an overarching level. Mm. Um, you have a lot of young people now in India um, who, there are so many more football fans in this generation, you know, because they've had access to that. Um, so to promote, grow and develop the sport itself from a 360 point of view, mm. The more the sport grows, everything in this ecosystem within that sport will grow. And um, like Vidic very rightly said, he said the first thing, forget technique, forget everything. First, show kids how much they can love and enjoy the sport. S it smiles first, you know. Mm. You, you get it for the next generation, it's important that the kids are encouraged and shown the way, give them a ball, let them kick it around, let them dribble, let them score, let them feel that emotion, let them become fans of football. Okay, well having people like you involved can only help. Gentlemen, thank you so much indeed thank for you. the last half an hour. Please put your hands together. Thank you. For our final panel today. Yeah. Okay. Um, we're gonna play a quick video, are we? Let's have a quick picture then. Good man. Okay, thank you. Nice to see you. Thank you. Many. Well, you can stay here for now if you want, if you're so kindly. Um, we're just going to show you a VT from um, Premier League Live, actually. Uh, it was an event that um, the Premier League had organized in Bangalore um, last year. Uh, and it's brought the taste and the experience of what the Premier League has to offer to thousands of fans who don't ordinarily get the chance to be there, if I'm not mistaken. 